the Able Gardener and I'm planting tomato plants today. So um, come on over and I'll show you how I plant tomato plants. Come on. <laughs> well, hey everybody. Uh, thanks for coming over today. I'm planting tomato plants. It's probably not the perfect place because uh, I just noticed my shadow was right over the hole. So I'm gonna move away just a little bit so you can see, oh, down in the hole where I'm gonna be putting the tomato. This is just a little beefsteak tomato. It's an indeterminate tomato, so all that means is it's going to keep growing and it'll, it'll just keep growing and producing all throughout the season. If it was a determinate tomato, then it would just grow to a certain point, uh, put on a lot of blossoms and a lot of fruit at one time, and they would all ripen at one time, and then that tomato plant would eventually die. So I'm gonna put in this beefsteak tomato, and I'll just show you the way that I plant tomatoes. So. Uh, this definitely isn't any way that you guys, you know, need to plant your tomatoes. I'm just going to show you how I plant mine. Well, I'm just going to take my little beefsteak tomato and I'm going to remove as many of the leaves as I possibly can. And let me do that over here real quick. Now, I plant my tomato plants deep. And if you've seen any tomato planting videos at all, uh, you probably know what the, the deep method is when it comes to planting tomatoes. Now this is a method that uh, was taught to me by my neighbor when I first moved in here. My neighbor next door was an older gentleman that all he did was garden and uh, it's been over 25 years ago that he taught me how to plant tomatoes deep and I've been doing it ever since. And it, it just really works out to put them as deep as you possibly can. So let me get this guy out of here. Now this is really surprises me, I mean it's got a nice got a nice root base but I thought there would be more roots than that so I think what is going on with my transplants the way the reason that they're not growing so much being outside here in these little containers isn't because they're root bound but it's because of the oh just the uneven water that I've been giving them if they look like they're they're dry I've watered them and then I won't come out for a day so they don't get water and tomato plants really want to be watered on a regular basis. So say like when they're in the ground, tomato plants want to be watered say once or twice a week. You pick one or two days and those are the days that you water that plant. You water it really well and really deep. And these haven't been getting that. They've, they've just gotten a, um, a really strange watering pattern. So you can see that I have my tomato plant so deep in the ground that I, I put all the soil back in that I took out, it would cover up the plant. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cover it up down, oh, just about maybe two or three inches below the foliage. And as it grows, I'll continue to cut some more of the leaves off and continue to fill it in with dirt. Now, I dug an oval hole here, and the reason for that is, is because with all my tomato plants or my deeper rooted plants, I put in a little water bottle and what I do is I just drill about oh three maybe three small holes down one side I put the water bottle in probably oh three or four inches away from the plant and I will fill this up with water probably twice a week and it'll water the roots down deep but I can't get him in there yet because it's not very long now that's just taking the place of what would what would be like an Oya pot the little clay oil pots that, oh, you put around plants and the roots actually encompass that clay oil pot. But I don't have oil pots and they're a little too expensive for me to buy one for each of my tomatoes. So I just use water bottles and they work out fine. So let me show you one thing that I do put in before I plant my tomato. Now what I make is a little mix that is half alfalfa meal, a quarter kelp meal and a quarter bone meal and um, on top of that I do sprinkle a little bit of humic acid in here and I take I just take half a cup and that's what I put in with my tomatoes so I'm gonna have to lift him out of there because I forgot to put that in I'm gonna put that down in the hole and mix it with the soil then I'm just going to put a little bit of soil on top of that that way when the roots start growing down through this soil, they're going to hit that 
a mixture of alfalfa meal, the bone, and the kelp, and then the roots are really going to be stimulated to grow. Uh, alfalfa meal is a root stimulant and has a lot of nutrients in it, and bone meal is full of calcium and nutrients. Besides the alfalfa, kelp, and bone meal, I'm going to put in a crumbled up aspirin and a calcium magnesium zinc tablet. And that just it comes from my cupboard of uh, vitamins and supplements. And I put those in with all my tomatoes last year. I didn't have any problems with my tomatoes at all. And I had, I had so many tomatoes, plus I had huge tomatoes, which I've never had before, tomatoes that weighed Oh, anywhere around a pound to a pound and a half on some of them, which really surprised me. Okay, so let me get this guy in there because the, the dirt is just falling away from this tomato. I'm going to get it back filled. So let me get my water bottle in there. And I don't know what I did with the cap, so I'm just going to put my hand over the top for right now. and backfill it. I was talking about the older gentleman that lived next door. He was such a fun guy to have as a neighbor because he not only gave me a lot of gardening tips, but he gave me a lot of vegetables too. <laughs> he had this little hole in the fence that as the fence went along, there was like a little uh, opening in the fence with like a, a small plywood platform. And if I would look, I would look out and if there was a bag sitting on that platform, I knew that he had picked vegetables that morning and that that bag was full of vegetables. So I'm going to continue to cut the foliage off of my tomato plant as it grows until, oh, it's probably a good foot or, foot or more high and it won't have any foliage probably on the bottom six inches. And if I have to, I can pull this water pot a little bit out more out of the ground. And also, as the plant grows, I'll continue to uh, put some soil up around the tomato plant. So let me get him watered in a little bit. And if you notice, the water looks a little bit brown. It's because I took the pH of my soil earlier before I planted the plant, and it came in right at 7. And that's a little too high on the pH scale for tomatoes. So I'll just show you real quick. Let me put my... Uh, little pH meter in the ground and if you can see that the pH of my soil is right at 7 so that's a little too alkaline for tomato plants and uh, usually all your vegetables in your garden grow really well at 6.5 and tomatoes like it even a little bit more acidic they like it around 6 to 6.5 so if your soil reads in at 6 to 6.5 for your tomato plant, then it will be absorbing magnesium and calcium. Too alkaline and it won't absorb the magnesium. Too acidic and it won't be absorbing the calcium. So you need to get that to where uh, your soil is the right acidity for your tomato plants. So that's why I'm watering it today with uh, watered down or diluted coffee water to get that soil to be a little more acidic. So all I do to water in the watering pot is I use this little automotive funnel that has a little tiny filter inside and I'm going to put some of my diluted coffee water in the watering pot also and it can start acidifying that soil down below. I'm glad you guys came by today. I just wanted to show you how I plant tomato plants. You know, you guys plant your plants the way you want to. Uh, this is just the way I do it. I just use a combination of the um, bone, alfalfa, and kelp meal with a little bit of humic acid put in it um, just for the transplant and so that the roots of the tomato plant can absorb the nutrients in the ground. I add um, a calcium magnesium zinc tablet and an aspirin. Oh, and I do also use a tablespoon of magnesium sulfate, but I had forgot to bring it out, so um, what I'll probably do is I'll put magnesium sulfate in the next watering and I'll put it right in the bottle so that the magnesium sulfate gets to the roots. Now, I know a lot of people, um, you know, they either do or don't believe in aspirin and magnesium sulfate. I don't find that I have any trouble using that. The tomatoes grow well. They produce a lot of tomatoes. So uh, this is just the way I plant tomatoes.
All I'm doing right now is I'm making a little paper collar for the bottom of my tomato plant. When you put them in and they're this susceptible to little bugs crawling by, this little collar that I put around the stem is going to keep uh, cut worms from getting at the stem of the plant. And I've got a lot of cut worms this year. So I'm just going to take this little roll up paper and I'm going to put it around the base of the tomato plant. Now an inch of it goes in the ground and an inch of it up above the ground. And with the few tomato plants that I have, it doesn't take a lot of time either. Now you have to be really careful putting this paper around your stem that you don't break the stem off. So if you're organic gardening, this little paper collar is going to help it to where if a little cutworm goes, comes by, um, he's not going to be able to get to your tomato plant right away. So there you've got your little paper collar around your tomato plant. If you have cutworms at all, that is going to help deter them from eating your tomato plant. And then in addition to that, I'm going to do some companion planting. So for companion planting, I'm just going to put in some marigolds. I actually had to go to the store and buy some because I didn't get them planted in time. And uh, they're just too small right now. So I'm going to put some marigolds in around my tomato. And marigolds are a great companion plant to help deter oh, different bugs that would come along and eat your plant, eat your tomato plant. So other companion plants would be oh, basil, chives, garlic, dill, and uh, probably calendula, which is just one of the, um, one of the marigold family. So I've got some calendula coming up from seed, and I'll probably put a few calendula in here also. Well, thanks for coming by today, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm glad you were able to see how I plant my tomato plants. And um, it just really gave me a boost, you guys coming by today. So put a comment below and let me know how you plant your tomato plants. Uh, do you take off the suckers? Do you plant your tomato plants deep? Do you have anything additional that you put in your uh, tomato planting hole? Uh, any kind of supplements, aspirin, magnesium sulfate? Uh, what kind of companion plants do you use around your tomatoes? Just put a comment below and let me know. I'd really like to hear from you guys and I'd like to see what you guys do with your tomatoes. So uh, th like I said, thanks for coming by and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye you guys. it for me today.